Okay, welcome back. We're still working with pedigrees of various kinds, and this time we're looking at a trait called congenital hypertrichosis. Congenital means there from birth, and hypertrichosis means the hair all over the body grows very thick and heavy, even places where most people just have peach fuzz. So, the trait is marked here by the colored circles and squares, and they say this is a sex-linked trait, or an X-linked trait, so there's just a plain X chromosome, which is what most people have that does not have anything to do with hypertrichosis, and then there's an X... They avoid using H, I guess, because that's usually used for hemophilia, so I'm just going to use C. I don't want to try to write CH on every one of these, so C will be congenital hypertrichosis. And then, of course, the counterpart to those is a Y chromosome, which has nothing to say. So, normal X, affected X, and neutral Y. And we have this family tree with four generations on it. And a new thing they're doing here that they don't always do in pedigrees is there's a slash through some individuals, which means that they've died. If you're a geneticist, that means you can't get you can't go get a blood sample from this person no matter how how helpful that would be you can't interview them ask them questions and that sort of thing and if it's a lethal trait it might catch your eye that somewhere in a family tree there's a cluster of people who died young and that might indicate to you that they didn't realize they had this disease but that's what killed them off so it's not really going to make any difference to our analysis but if you ever see those slashes it just means whoever made the chart was keeping track of which members of the family are still alive and which ones aren't. So, what can we tell about individuals on this tree? Just starting at the top, we have uh, an unaffected male. So he had X, and then because he's a male, he had a Y. Easy enough. We had an affected female, who would have to be X little c. Now, this, judging by the way that they use capital C's, or capital C-H, is a dominant trait. So if she was affected, that means she had XC, and we don't know what the other one is. She could have been XCXC, or she could have had XC and a normal allele that wasn't able to express itself because it's recessive. Not sure about that. For now, we'll just stay with XC. They had a daughter who is unaffected. If you're unaffected, that must mean you have two normal X's. Because normal is recessive in this case, the only way it would be expressed is if you have two of it. Then they had an affected daughter who would be XC something. This fellow is from outside the family and he is unaffected, so he's got a normal X and then he has a Y because he's a guy. Here we have the affected X and then a Y because male. Normal female is XX. I should probably do these kind of assembly line just to make it go a little faster. So any unaffected female has to be just XX. Two normal X's. Uh, any normal male has to be XY his only X chromosome is the normal type. Hey Jeff, how's it going? XY. This one who died was an XY. XY again. XY there. This is XY. Ugh. Wish I had more space so I could write nicer for you. I'll try to talk through all the important points so that nothing gets missed. Okay, so what haven't we done yet? An affected woman is XC blank. We don't know if she's XCXC or XCX, but certainly she has one copy of the hypertrichosis XC blank and XC blank XC blank there, XC blank, and for these two, oh, 
Okay, I think that's preliminary information for everybody. Let's see if that's enough to get these questions answered, and if it isn't, then we'll get into the weeds and see what we can figure out. Individual 1-1, one, one, Generation 1, Individual 1, we definitely got their XY. 1-2 is Great Grandma, she... Uh, we have a blank here, let's see if we can resolve that. She is XC something. What can we learn from her kids? We don't know anything about her parents, so we can't work down. We pretty much have to work up. Here's something. She had a daughter who had two normal exes. One of those could have come from Dad. We know he has that. The other one had to come from her, which means her second ex is the normal one, and her genotype would be XCX. She has the hypertrichosis herself, but she also is like a carrier for the normal trait or the normal condition, and that's what she passed on to this daughter. Individual 2-4 is this son. We got that one. He's XCY. That's the only way a male can have hypertrichosis. XC and then Y because he's male. Generation 4-6... Uh, this is a blank. Can we do anything with this? This is a female, so she has two X chromosomes. One came from her mom, that explains the XC. The other X had to come from her dad, who is individual 311. And he has a normal X. Which means he would have passed on to her his normal X. And that makes her genotype XCX. It didn't help. She still has the XC allele from her mom, and so she still has hypertrichosis, but at least she's a carrier for the normal condition and may pass it on. So individual 4-6 is XCX. Individual 3-1 is this fellow. He's XC... or sorry, this is this is a girl. XC blank. Can we tell what where this came from? Well, we know her mom is XX, and that means her mom would have passed on the normal X to every one of her kids, including her daughter. This isn't a normal X, so it must be in the second position, like so. So this daughter got XC from her dad and X from her mom. And that makes her genotype XCX. And individual 3-3, three, three, this one is an unaffected daughter. She's actually from outside the family, but a woman who is unaffected is definitely XX. If either one of her exes carried the hypertrichosis condition, she would show it. Since she doesn't, she must have normal exes. Fair enough.